All right. So yet another Lodash uh, function. So we have and the challenges, many like Lodash did it, we should do it too type challenges. I'm not so f fond of that, uh, but oh well, here we are. So this is Lodash.chunk. It's a useful function. Uh, let's implement it. So let's just look at the challenges. Uh, I think the tests make it clear. So when we're passing an empty array as the first argument and we're giving a chunk size of one, we get nothing back. So okay, fine. Mm -hmm. When we have three things and we want a chunk size of one, we're going to get an array back, or a tuple, rather. And in the tuple, there will be more tuples, and they will have that many items. So in this case, we said one, so it'll have one many items. If we said two mm -hmm. with that same input, we'll have too many items until we get to the end, and like the end will have um, either right you know, like some lower number of items. Mm -hmm. If we have a number that's greater than the size of the chunk, then we just return the whole thing. And of course, this works for any TypeScript values. So it's not just numbers. It could be unions. It could be anything. But we're treating each element of the input tuple like flat as a as a kind of like starting point. So so yeah, that's the that's the the one that's the, that's the Lodash function anyway. Uh, how would you? So okay, Andrew, how would you approach it? Some of the solutions for this are a little bit like like twisty turny um, like from a pseudocode perspective how would you think about this or how would you solve something like this yeah um, I think what I would probably want to do the thing that's coming to mind is I know we can take like a tuple and we could like infer the first two types in it and then infer like a, a rest using like the rest operator yes, um, and up. so that's a great way to like grab well I said two because I'm looking at the like two as our chunk size um, and I think it may be challenging to do that with a like a dynamic chunk size. We would essentially have to iterate, I guess, um, or like recurse and have like mm -hmm. you know, per per chunk, like take a, like basically um, like pop off that head element um, once per iteration until our chunk size is down. Like can decrement our chunk size, uh, and then when it gets to zero, we start a new chunk. Maybe, um, yeah. I was definitely thinking of like including uh, another generic there for like. An accumulator type. Awesome. Um, okay. So yeah, great. So this far. is very much along the lines of what I was thinking. So this is our first time looking at something you and me, but people who have been watching are super familiar by now that we use accumulators a lot in TypeScript, uh, like tuples to do math because mm -hmm. there's no other way or to like count that we're done with a certain operation because there's really no other way to make it work. Um, yes. So in this case, like we always have to do ACC. Um, length. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's going to be like extends u. We'll come back to this in a second. And in the base case where t doesn't extend, so there's no like basically there's no values of t left is when we would hit this thing where the cursor is now. So we'll put yeah. A so we just length. like return the accumulator, right? Um, so we have to check if it extends zero. Um. Okay, because we might have some values left, and we'll return it like this. Because we have to wrap it, um, we have to wrap that accumulator in a in a tuple itself in order to be like returning on the base case. Okay, so gotcha. yeah, does this all make sense so far? I think so. Yeah. All right. So what would you what do you think about the innards in here? Um, so the the length does extend the the chunk size. So when we've stored up some values in there, so we have like right. Uh, so if the length extends the chunk size, we've like finished the current chunk, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to yeah put the chunk in, and then I guess we iterate over the rest of the values or the the tail there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yep. Exactly. We're gonna and well we'll we'll do that here in the in the false case. I think if if there's still more val if there are still more values, we can pass in tail. The u never changes. We're just keeping you know. Keeping it uh, yeah, and mm -hmm. then in here, oops, not me. I hate when it does. <laughs> it's like a recurring thing of these challenges. It's like when it when it does it like adds weird things in when you try to hit enter. So yeah, I mean, talk talk me through it. Like, how does uh, does this is this what you envisioned? Yeah, I think so. So the idea, what what I'm seeing here is like, so when. When the the one that you've highlighted there, yeah, that is the case where we have we finished this current chunk, we're ready to move on to the next chunk, and so we're returning like our tuple where the chunk is there at the beginning, the first chunk that we have, and then we're working on the next chunk. I think the part that um, 
maybe I'm I'm missing. I'm trying to see how this is going to work. Is like the we should um, like where does what if that accumulator is say the second chunk uh, that we've created? Um, is it is the accumulator always just the current chunk? Uh, is the accumulator always just the current chunk uh, for this recursion? I think like uh, they're blind, right? So they don't know. Yep. They don't know uh, what other like the accumulator is is passing in the you know piece by piece. But when we the t becomes tail when we recurse. This is the this is the yes. level where we're recursing as well as here. But like if we've mm -hmm. already if we've already meet the number, then we can pass in the accumulator. But this is actually like it's a little bit backwards in a way. Like, but. Yeah, F, F, the T here is is only going to be the input, the very first time. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, right. we're we're going to be passing in the tail. So like we're going to be passing in uh, two and three or something, or two, three, and four after the first after the first. Well, actually, it would be three and four, I guess, after the first recursion. Otherwise, we're going to just be building up the accumulator. So yeah, I think and it, I think you explained it really well that you know we're done with the current chunk. We can move on to the next one. And then here is like we're not done with the current chunk. We we need to add the the you know head to it, and then keep yep. keep moving. Cool. Yeah. Um, that's cool. Uh, let me show. We're kind of. I guess I'll go in like kind of reverse order here. Um, I, I I love to have all these alternatives because like I picked one that was close to how you described you would solve the problem. Um, here's a different one that's a that's a little bit different. Mm, so, okay, so this includes uh, an extra generic there, like uh, our temp, which I assume is like the the current chunk maybe that we're building up. Yep, I think you're I think you're spot on about that. So, yeah, this one is a little more complicated, but it's I mean like kind of could be refactored into the one we were looking at. I think it takes a little more thinking, but it's an obvious it's an obvious enough approach like that you would make a temporary variable for the thing for the current chunk. Um, yeah, and I got to say like. It, it is a little bit more complex, but in another way too, I feel like it's um, it's a little more explicit about what's going on, and you can kind of see both the the list of chunks you're creating and then also the current chunk that you're building up, and uh, that makes a little bit more sense to me. It, it feels a little more intuitive just looking at it, um, or like I, I understand what's going on faster. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. This is this is this line here is the creation of the first time that we make a new chunk. Mm -hmm. This yep. line here is adding to an existing chunk, but we don't touch the accumulator because we haven't, we're not ready to yet. Yes. And then this stuff here. Yeah, the yeah. two cases are like, you're either adding to the current chunk or you're adding the finished chunk to the the final set mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in each in each iteration there. Yep. Cool. Cool. So this one is similar to the first one um, in a lot of ways. This last one here that I have is is a different approach, I think. So we still have an okay. accumulator. Mm -hmm. um, so if we reached our chunk size, then like we can recurse. But otherwise, right. we're going to take values off and um, and and add them in. Yep, that makes sense. We're still yeah. This feels a lot like the first one, just kind of restructured a little. Yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, it it is. I mean, it's it's interesting. It's like it skips having to do this length check twice, and and puts this. Oh yeah, it puts this base case as like a as like the the last, et cetera case, which is you know which is fine. It it's interesting how you can get to this kind of place. Like so, these I think all like it's a good point you make. All three of these are very similar in some ways, but um, yeah, I don't know uh, which which of these do you like the most. I think definitely the the second one, the, the middle, middle one there. I feel like yeah, having the extra the extra variable or the extra like uh, generic type there, the temp, um, makes it really explicit to me like what's going on and and how we're trying to do it. Um, when I'm building these types like in my actual work, I think both about like what expresses what I'm trying to do, but what also is going to be easily readable for like other people who have to look at this code. And mm -hmm. and this one I think hits both of that really well. Great. Yeah, that's uh, that's great to hear. Um, that's and that's great feedback too for you know anybody watching. Like, it's good to think about these things. I always tell people, um, you know, those who have studied this conclude that engineers, like programmers, software engineers, spend uh, something like ten times more time reading code than writing code. 
We tend to think mm -hmm. that we sit here and write code all day, but actually we sit here and read code all day. Um, so if you're yeah, going to optimize for, for anything, sure. it's like not so bad to optimize for reading. Um, but cool. On to the next one then. Let's do it. <laughs>